So now we know that substances which carry current are conductors which do not carry are uh, insulators and there are certain substances which are known as semiconductors which are not as good conductors uh, as the uh, you know maybe the good uh, as good conductors as the conductors are. But these semiconductors can become conductor on certain special conditions maybe when the temperature is increased maybe when these substances are mixed with a uh, little bit of different metals. So that means by giving certain important conditions the uh, substance can be converted into a semiconductor because these have property of both metals and non metals. Now we will talk about the LED first and then we will discuss the another topic. So what is the meaning of LED? I will write the full form of LED afterwards but first of all would like to tell that what is LED this is this kind of structure. And we all have seen these LED many a times this is not certain you know in a, this is not a substance which is not seen by us or not used by us. Now these LEDs are available in the market of different colors maybe red, green, yellow, blue and this is used in uh, different uh, festivals and uh, you know different occasions and this one is very very famous also like we have everybody has seen this. Main thing is that it glow on very less temperature also. Why we are discussing because it glows on very less temperature also. Now when we talk about the arms this too you can see over here. So these arms are known as leads. This is known as leads. Now out of this one is bigger and the another one is shorter. As you can see this one is shorter and this one is the bigger one. Now bigger one is uh, the uh, positive it will be having a positive sign it, is, uh, it had got plus charge and here a negative. So the longer arm is a positive end and the smaller arm is the negative end and these are available in market in different colors also. What is the use of LED? It is used uh, in different uh, uh, ways in different uh, uh, no like festivals in uh, making the uh, series and all. But basically when we talk about the current chapter we use LED when the current is very feeble just now we saw a, um, a circuit a rough circuit where I used a substance a substance was connected and we were supposed to know that whether the substance is carrying the current or it is not carrying the current. So by making a circuit and attaching that substance to the circuit we can understand that substance is a conductor if the bulb glows. But if the current is very less if the current is weak then the bulb is uh, bulb will not glow because the current sometimes is not enough to glow the bulb but current flows current is there. So in such kind of cases LED is used because it does not need much uh, of the current and it will glow and it will glow on the with the weaker current also. So this is all about LED and when we talk about the full form of LED. So it is light emitting diode light emitting diode uh -huh. it is light emitting diode. So this is the full form of LED light emitting diode it has got two arms and the, the, these are known as leads and the bigger one is uh, it has got the positive 
end the bigger is the positive end now just now we discussed that there are certain solids which can conduct electricity which cannot conduct electricity and the few which can conduct electricity on certain specific conditions do liquid conduct electricity because we have not discussed anything about the liquids so do liquids carry electricity and as we have seen that we can see we can check whether this substance this solid can carry electricity or not is it possible to check in liquids that whether this liquid is carrying current is it uh, is this liquid is carrying current is the liquid this particular particular liquid is a conductor or a bad conductor how to know so yeah we can also check the liquids that whether the liquids are conductors or uh, not they can carry electricity or they cannot carry electricity now first of all if we talk about the water now you know we can do one thing that uh, we, we can we can make a circuit i'll draw the circuit on the blackboard also we can make a circuit and we can take a different different liquids and check whether this liquid will be conducting uh, will be carrying current or will not be carrying current so what has to be done for that what we need to do is we just need to again make a very small circuit now again the rheostat is there and now we have to see whether the liquid is carrying whether the liquid is carrying current or not so we can again the same type of circuit this one i'll use certain different chalks this is a beaker in this beaker this is very very simple circuit children so now this is a here this is we have taken a wire again that uh, cell is used rheostat key this i do not need to mention because this we uh, you all uh, have already read in seventh standard that uh, what is the sign of the wire what is the symbols and all this is already over so this is a rheostat this is again the key and the bulb and the beaker which has got liquid it has got liquid and the in this way the wires are left over here now we can check i'm saying that we can check that this liquid whichever is uh, taken used whether this carries liquid or it doesn't carry liquid again the bulb will be glowing if the uh, liquid is conductor now in place of bulb again you can use led and uh, first of all in first condition if we take distilled water in first condition if we take distilled water now what is distilled water distilled water is the purest form of the uh, water this water uh, how it is uh, like how it, how the water is distilled so in distillation flask the water is taken water is allowed to boil obviously it will get converted into steam the steam will be collected and on the condenser from where the path where the liquid will the water vapor will move the cold water is poured so that again the steam get converted into water that means suppose very rough diagram from here the water is boiling and here the this is very different kind of a diagram but just you know this is a 
tube now from here the water is there now water has got various kinds of impurities salts are there various things are there but when it is allowed to boil only water that means the water vapor will be moving from here water vapor will be moving from here it will move from this tube and when it moves from it this tube here the cold water is poured so that the water vapor which is moving here will again get converted into liquid and here the distilled water will be collected here the distilled water will be collected that means the big this setup is quite different children it is not as i have drawn but just wanted to show what is distilled water so water is taken which has got lot of impurity if you if you collect water from the tap also river also sea also it will have got lot of impurities different kind of salts will be there so this is a beaker in which the uh, water is there it will be boiled due to boiling the water will get converted into water vapor this water vapor will come from this tube and it will be collected over here but as uh, the temperature is reduced over here so water vapor which is coming from here will again convert into water and again the purest form of water can be convert can be collected here so this kind of water is known as distilled water now if we take distilled water over here distilled water if we take a distilled water so do you think that distilled water will carry current and led will glow i said distilled water is the pure water distilled water is the pure water and a kind of a water which do not have any kind of salts do not have any salts so when this water do not have any salt that means ions will not be formed and so distilled water will not be able to carry the current and so this led will not glow so what is the conclusion that the distilled water do not carry electricity now you can do one thing that in this way you can take different things acids can be taken bases can be taken salts can be taken and then the check test can be there that means one can check take little acid and mix in this first of all distilled water is there there will be no uh, current in the circuit and the bulb will not glow add little acid in this then see what happens add little base in distilled water then see add little salt in this and then see so first of all what is clear from this point that even liquids conduct electricity in fact any liquid which has got acid base or salt will conduct electricity if liquid is conducting electricity if liquid is carrying electricity that means it has got either acids or base or salts and in this way different as uh, different different liquids can be checked whether they carry electricity or they do not carry electricity third thing which is very clear from this is that distilled water do not carry electricity why doesn't doesn't carry electricity because it is pure form of water it do not have any kind of salts in it and so distilled water cannot uh, carry electricity because ion formation doesn't takes place ion formation or no ion formation i'll write in very short no ion formation and when ion formation will not take place that means the electricity can cannot be carried now we'll talk about that how current how can we make this uh, bulb glow here i have taken distilled water this was the first step now in second step if i add nacl to this that means if i add salt over here if i add salt in this solution then what will happen i will keep the circuit same in this i will add little i will put little salt and stir that so what will happen you know now the bulb will glow 
why the bulb will glow because NaCl is added to this solution NaCl is added to this solution children so, now we will be discussing afterwards after this that how NaCl gets broken up and all this thing we will discuss but for now what is required to understand that the distilled water will not carry electricity but when salt is added in this when acid is added in this when base is added in this it is going to carry electricity and this in the same circuit while adding different different things in different pure distilled water the uh, pure this conductivity check uh, or test can be completed or can be done so if salt common salt the salt which we use for eating uh, if that salt is added in this water then what will happen NaCl is dissolved in this water then distilled water will start carrying electricity and the bulb will glow what actually has happened over here we will just have a look one thing has become clear that the distilled water will not carry the current but when salt is added into distal water it will start carrying current when acid is added in the distal water it will carry current when base is added in the uh, distal water it will carry current that means any liquid which is carrying current any liquid any liquid which carries current it will have either what it will have either acid in it it will have either base in it or it will have any salt in it this is for sure if any liquid is carrying current that means that liquid will be having acid or base or salt just now we discussed that in distilled water when salt was added common salt NaCl it started carrying current the bulb glue the bulb was the bulb started glowing what actually happened so we will talk about that now now suppose again we will take a beaker in this we will add water and we will take two rods over here this rods are made up of copper these are copper rod now this is connected with the wire and again the same thing that means the circuit is made again the bulb is there rheostat is there and it is completed and obviously cell which is very very important so even cell is there again we are discussing about a circuit this is a circuit very rough always remember very rough circuit we are drawing over here which has got a cell or a key is there periostat is there bulb is there now certain new things to discuss now whenever children current passes through a solution current passes through a solution if I take distal water over here the current will not pass and nothing will happen but when I add uh, one more thing when I add anything like acid base or salt here will take salt if I add NaCl to this this will start passing the current and the bulb will glow so the solution which is filled in this is known as electrolyte the solution is known as electrolyte now what actually electrolyte what happens to the electrolyte 
whenever current flows through any solution it get decomposed into its ions it gets broken up into the ions that means NaCl will get divided into Na and Cl whenever electric current pass through a solution here the solution is what water and salt nothing else that means salty solution or saline uh, solution saline water is there. So, when current is passed through this solution it will decompose who will decompose the current will decompose the solution into its into its ions. So, here the NaCl is added in this solution and current is passed. So, NaCl will get broken into its constituents into its ions that means Na positive and Cl negative. So, it will get broken up into its ions its constituents that is NaCl, NaCl, NaCl that means Na plus and Cl negative. So, what is an electrolyte? Electrolyte that means it is when uh, current is passed to any solution it get decomposed into its ion. Now, this process is known as electrolysis the process in which on passing current electrolyte gets broken into its ions then it is known as which process this is known as electrolysis I will write here this is electrolysis ions it is known as what electrolysis. So, what is electrolysis children? when the solution get decomposed into its ion due to the current when the current is passed in any solution here the current is passed in this solution when the current is passed it is getting broken up into its constituents that means Na and Cl and this process is known as what electrolysis. Now, here we have got this one is known as electrodes. this one is electrode when you attach the one end to the positive side then it becomes anode and the negative side will become cathode. There is no place so I wrote over here anode and cathode. So, when the electrode is added to the or attached to the positive end of the battery I will just make a change. So, when when positive side is there when it is added to the positive side then it is known as anode and when it is added to the negative side then it is known as cathode. So, this is a simple circuit which contains a beaker in this I should not say beaker the cell here this one is having one electrolyte why it is having electrolyte that means a solution is there in which uh, distal water is there, but distal water will not carry current and so NaCl is added. Now, when current will be passed this NaCl will get broken up into Na and Cl ions and this process of getting broken up into constituent ion is known as electrolysis and the solution which get broken up the solution which get broken up into its constituents is known as electrolyte. The solution which get broken up into its constituent is known as electrolyte, electrolyte and the process is known as electrolysis. Now, simple wire and the simple circuit is there. Now, this one is the anode and cathode made up of copper. So, what actually will happen this when electrolyte gets broken up positive charge or positively charged sodium here what we have got 
we have got lot of NA and CL now. NA CL because it is broke, it is getting broken up now. So, so this sodium will start moving to the negative end and chlorine will start moving to the positive end. So, ions are formed and so current will flow and the bulb will glow. Now, again very small thing if we take one lemon, if we take one lemon and before taking a lemon just take a old cell and take out rod of zinc from that zinc rod and carbon rod you will find the strips inside that zinc and carbon. Now, what has to be done wash. So, what has to be done we have taken a cell and out of the cell we have removed the zinc and carbon rod. Now, this is what this is a lemon this is a lemon and from this in this lemon we have to make two slits. Now, in one we will add zinc rod over here and another one we will put carbon. We will attach this with a wire and here what is there this end has to be taken in the mouth the ends of the wire has to be taken in the mouth you will feel a tickling effect a tickling effect that means the current is flowing. Now, why current is flowing children because here in this lemon lemon juice is there we all know lemon is acidic in nature lemon juice is acidic in nature. So, lemon juice is of acidic nature that means the here when the lemon is taken and the two cuts are made in this two cuts in one cut what is done actually zinc and uh, the other one the carbon is space which we have taken out from the cell. Now, here the two rods are immersed in the lemon and is now put in the, the it is connected with the wire and then it is put into the mouth. We will feel a tickling effect why this tickling effect is there children this tickling effect is there because here the acid solution is there and we know that whenever acid base or salt is present in the solution definitely it is going to carry current it is going to carry current and that is the reason even you can replace lemon with uh, sweet lime or uh, anything which has got acid any fruit. So, it will conduct electricity the tickling effect shows that electricity is passing obviously this is very very weak it is very very weak because the amount is very less the ion formations are very lesser. Now, we will talk about the next example now we will talk about any other uh, fruit or vegetable from where we can see that the effect of current is there in another way. We can see the chemical effect of the current we can see the chemical effect of the current we will take potato and make or divide it into half and uh, then the circuit will be made I will show you how it has to be done. Now, we will talk about the magnetic effect magnetic effect of the current magnetic effect. Now, again we will take the copper wire and we will try to make a circuit. And here we 
will take a empty match box will take a empty match box and in this empty match box will keep the compass the compass magnetic compass will keep it over here and will will again turn this magnetic needle with this same wire and it will be connected in this way over here so this one is our match box inside this a magnetic needle is kept and over here this one is our circuit circuit the wire is there and we need to cover this match box also with the wire that means this we have to wrap this with the wire again the cell is there now this two ends are left free so what we are trying to show we have studied this that in previous class 7 standard that even the uh, current shows the magnetic effect now as we can see over there that one end is left free now what has to be done children if this two ends are you know brought closer to uh, close to each other temporarily just we have to meet this two ends two ends of the wire for a very short time we'll see that the needle in this this is a magnetic compass in which we all know that needle is there like this so this needle will show deflection that means it will move towards any side children towards any side any side that means it depends upon the direction of the uh, current so uh, that you are going to read in the 10th standard so this will show deflection for short time and again it will come to the case so why this deflection is shown because we know that the current has got magnetic effect also here we have taken the wire here we have taken one match box in the match box empty match box we have kept one magnetic uh, we can say compass and again it is connected in this way these two ends are attached temporarily for a short time very short time and we will see deflection in the magnetic needle deflection in the magnetic needle can be seen why this deflection is there just what we are trying to prove that the that the current has got magnetic effect also and this deflection will be there now this deflection depends upon the amount of the current if the current is weaker obviously the deflection will be less if the current is strong then the deflection will also be very strong so this is how we can show that the uh, current here we have show magnetic effect of the current now we'll learn one more thing in the same so this was magnetic effect of current now in second case what can be done that in this circuit if we take one potato and make a half of this and we make a cut and this copper wires are inserted inside this in this way and then it is kept like this only for 30 minutes it is see i am showing two experiments in one only now it is kept like this only for 30 minutes after 30 minutes what will be seen that on the positive end you will find a greenish bluish spot after 30 minutes this can also be used as a tester to know that which end is positive and which end is negative here we can check the uh, here we can check the ends that means this terminal is positive or this terminal is negative so this this is how in the first case we read the magnetic effect of the current and in the second we are uh, able to make a tester which can show that this end is positive and the previous one the magnetic needle get deflected because uh, the current has got magnetic effect due to the current the the magnetic needle uh, showed deflection 
Now we will discuss about the next topic and please note these points.